Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about Zenfin Network, aka XDC. So let's just dive in and let's start off with this tweet here from the EBA underscore association. So this is the Euro Banking Association. We do see one more week, it's now five days actually, um, until the next open forum on digital transformation takes place. Uh, this is going to be their online discussion on supply chain finance and working capital and how it will be going digital. Now, if we actually go and look at this, we could see the open forum on digital transformation explores the use of future oriented technologies such as AI, robotics and cloud technologies in banking and payments. Our discussions address questions around cybersecurity, digital customer relationships and also the challenges of implementing the new technology. So. Mainly what I want to address with this is the fact that things are moving very, very fast. Um, I know that to some people, when you go over to, for example, like the XDC um, price chart, it doesn't really look like much is moving um, because look at the one year. I mean, look at the one year on XDC. We're coming up on one whole year that we've just been trailing sideways. This is the worst case scenario for some people because they are very impatient um we've been looking at xdc so long i mean me personally when we look at xdc and what zinfin is doing i have zero doubt um i personally think that a lot of these assets a lot of people want to get rich quick right and the thing about that is it's great if that's your your mentality but the problem is is that you're going to crash and burn because within this market you have these impulsive moves to the upside and the thing is is that you'll have spikes here and there but for the most part it happens after consolidation it happens after you know lengths of time like for example i always look at X xrp and I, I always share my idea on XRP. It's like the idea on like, well, this thing was just trailing sideways for so long. I mean, you got to remember that it took five years for it to really kind of start to make massive move. Um, the last time that this topped out was back in 2018. That's when we had the all-time high. We have not hit an all-time high since 2018. It's been, you know, over five years now. And, you know, it's one of those patience things. We know what's happening with XRP. We understand what's happening with XRP. It's just the fact that we're waiting for time to catch up. We're waiting for, you know, things to happen. And that sucks because for most people, patience is not their best quality. A lot of people get impatient and they start to sell out of these assets. But I think that that's one of the biggest mistakes right now around Zinfin and XDC. And why do I think that? Well, let's take a look at this. So this is from Trade Finance Global. Now, remember that name, Trade Finance Global. Why will the enactment of the Electronic Trade Documents Bill ignite digital trade? Well, there's a few reasons why. First off, here are three incredible reasons why. As you guys do see, there's Trade Finance Global down here. Um, and here we have from Andre Casterman. Yesterday, I shared three recommendations for the industry to progress multi-bank trade distribution when on stage at the joint um, BCR publishing slash ITFA conference with Thomas Krieger and a few other individuals of, uh, as well, representing Commerce Bank, AG, City, SMBC Group, and Trade Tech. Here's the three main topics that they discuss. Securitization as a service is critical to provide a market-wide and standardized approach to bridge banking and capital markets. This also means digitizing financial institutions risk distribution or sorry, digitizing financial uh, risk distribution is or actually I was wrong. I do apologize. Digitizing financial institutions risk distribution is interesting, but will not move the needle um, Two, automated distribution processes are essential to lower operational costs as banks need to sell high volumes of payables and receivables to institutional investors. Um, that's where the value of technology is optimal in term in terms of increasing net interest income and ROE. Uh, this also means banks better spend IT resources on internal system integration, not on designing what's available off the shelf. 
The above is what ITFA made possible through the TFDI, which is powered by TradeTech, including establishing the largest community of asset sellers and investors. Three, as an industry, we can do more as I shared on my recent blog published in Trade Finance Global, last paragraph, building on the proven distribution technology banks could establish a new utility as a financial market infrastructure owned and governed by banks. This would open the door to further scale the market and go beyond the provision of technology capabilities. And again, focus on trade tech. Trade tech is the giant here. In fact, trade tech is the big one because they're already working with Zinfin, as you guys do see over here as well. Um, which, by the way, this is just under pages people also viewed. It's the reason why I'm just saying like they're over here as well. Um, but they are working closely with Zinfin. They're also working closely with other companies as well, like Midigram, TradeStream, um, Anisio, etc. Um, they're all collaborating on this massive push towards digitizing this entire industry. And I always say like it's not just going to be one name. Like a lot of people think that XRP is going to move all the money. Well, guess what? I hate to break it to you, but there's a very competitive market for cross-border payments, and there's going to be many, many players within that market. Um, this is why collaboration is key. But also, I do think that trade finance is the big discussion. I know that we talk about trade finance every single time when we talk about XDC. It's very repetitive, right? But we know that banks have been focused on this for so long, right? Trade, future-proofing corporates for the coming digital revolution in trade. Like, they've been preparing this. This is from JP Morgan's website, jpmorgan.com. We do see key takeaways. Uh, the application of distributed ledger technology is bringing the fully digitized future of trade finance ever closer. But in order to capitalize on this opportunity, corporates must lay the groundwork by deploying the digital solutions that are already available to them today. For example, digitize across the entire chain to be future ready. Corporates cannot take advantage of DLT without first digitizing trade documents. Future data and also pilots will direct you. The DLT market is still in the initial stages of determining what solutions are viable and can provide value to a wide range of clients, and then focus on mature digital solutions to deploy. While participating in pilots of new DLT solutions is potentially beneficial, the most valuable action a corporate can take today is to deploy currently available mature digital solutions, which will have an immediate impact. Read that one more time. Remember what I've said about XRP, and remember what I just said about XDC. These are two mature tokens. When you go back in time to the all-time chart, these are tokens that, one, XRP was around since 27, uh, 2012. Sorry, I was about to say 2017. Um, XDC was around during roughly 2017, 2018's beginning. Um, and these are two assets. <clears throat> these are two assets in the XRP ledger as well. Um, like These are two that have been around for so long. These are mature tokens. These are mature digital offerings. These are two mature DOTs. Um, they are going to be the ones that mainly get a lot of focus. I always say like the ones that are around for a while that are tried, tested, and true, like they're going to be the big ones. And that's what we are seeing um, be confirmed here from JP Morgan. We also do see down here the world of trade finance. Long, a laggard on the digitization front, is abuzz with proof of concepts um, and pilots seeking to leverage digital infrastructure to drive in, uh, efficiencies. Over 60% of banks surveyed in the International Chamber of Commerce's latest report, Global Trade, Securing Future Growth, said they are now implementing or have already implemented tech, uh, technology solutions to digitize their trade finance operations and work is underway to digitize paper documents switch existing business practices to digital formats and experiment with new technologies and solutions, which again, like this is happening right now. And we're seeing a big shift within this. Now think about how crazy this is because this is from um, a few years back. Now this entire article talking about DLT technology, talking about trade finance and talking about all of the big steps towards this. Like for example, here's taking the first steps, talking about it, all that kind of stuff. Um, things are already changing around trade finance but now today more than ever because again this has been being talked about and in plans for a very long time um today more than ever we are starting to see the big shift happening what is that well the electronic trade documents bill so going back to my initial uh viewpoint on this this is the um talks about this electronics trade documents bill um this has been in plans for a while but we first seen the first reading back in october of uh, last year from there we've seen the second reading then from there we've seen uh the full second reading itself be released and then february we've seen the lord's special public bill committee and now we're at this report stage 
All right, so I guess it's a little bit different on the phone. Um, I was trying to find a specific thing on the full thing. I think it might actually be just down here. I think it's just a little bit different on the phone, like I said. Um, but we are basically at this bill started in the House of Lords. So we are at the report stage. After this, we will go towards the third reading. After the third reading is fully done and finished, we will move towards the bill in the House of Commons which we will have to go through the first, second, committee stage, report stage, and third reading, just very similar to what we just recently seen here. These stages do take a little bit of time. So far, it's been roughly five months. Um, so maybe like another five months or so, six or so. Um, but we'll have the final stages here uh, very soon, which is consideration of amendments and then the royal assent, which this is going to allow for electronic trade documentation to be fully adopted in. This is going to be a big game changer, um, which by the way, you could check out the PDF file around this bill, read into it fully and understand it. Um, but this is changing the way paper documentation is handled. We're seeing everything around these documents being digitized and also tokenized, which a bill of exchange, promissory note, bill of lading, ships delivery order, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and all of this is being changed through DLT technology. And it's going to be centered on collaboration. Um, but this harmonized approach on this bill is a big game changer because once we see this fully um, embraced, it's going to change everything. Now with this, I also want to let you guys in on a secret. So Trade Tech, the Trade Token, which we've talked about many, many times on this channel, through the ICC, they are actually officially on the ICC United Kingdom's website as a member built on XDC Network. That's a crypto NRD for this. Now, why is this big? Well, let's go over to the ICC website. Here's 45 million companies, 1 billion employees, 100 plus countries. And when you look at who they are working with, look at all of these big names and look at some of their, the members as well. Some of the largest banks out there. And this is just a few, right? There's so many other major ties to them. But Trade Tech, being a member with them, that is a huge game changer. And also, this... Like some of these statistics up here, don't, like they don't even let us in on some of the bigger secrets. When we go to the benefits on the ICC UK's website, here you have a little bit of an insight on this. So being a member of the ICC means you are a part of a vast global community of 6.5 million or companies of all sizes and sectors in over 130 countries, the largest world business organization. This is huge because all of these businesses, all of these major businesses, guess what? They're all doing banking, trade finance. I mean, every one of them is going to be utilizing trade finance use cases. And they represent the business at intergovernmental level at the UN, the G20, the World Trade Organization, and other major international institutions and global events and offer a global perspective on the business issues. This is a name that you want to pay attention to. They are a leader behind trade finance. They're a leader behind um, like a massive variety of businesses, companies, etc. This and having trade tech tied to it is huge. I cannot tell you guys how big of a game changer this is. This puts a ton of confidence behind the idea that trade tech is going to be leveraged for trade financial use cases, but also Zinfin because Trade tech is built out on Zinfin. It's a huge deal. Like this is massive. This is massive. Digital trade and trade finance itself is going to be fully transformed. And I'm very excited for this. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys have more free content. If you guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the video description down in the description below. Uh, so I just hope that you all have a beautiful day or a beautiful night, wherever you guys are in this video. This has been Nick. Peace out, guys.